What's going on, my guys? Second Poco here, bringing you another Seven Listens Grand Cross video for us. We're going over the news, and we're gonna be talking about the news updates for uh, the April seventh update. And we're gonna be talking about all the fun things that are being added, and of course, live reactions to everything. So, guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alrighty guys, we're going to be going over the 4-7 update, and for this update, we are going to be talking about the things that are going to be happening in this video game. So first up on the new events that are going to be added, the tree that grants true love. Okay, that, I think that sounds like the Elizabeth event that we did right before the slime event, I want to say. Uh, then we have the Hawk Pass event, so Hawk Pass, please buy it, it's awesome, yes, it's worth. <laughs> I don't know what's in it, but we're gonna find out very soon. Uh, Hawk's Baby Book, cool, don't know what that is. Then we have three, two new characters coming to the game. The first character coming to the game is Red Helbrum. So, playing your game today will be Kingbrum. Yay! Uh, we're gonna have a new character to be added, which will be Holy Knight Death Pierce, who is hot garbage. His passive is pretty good, but uh, I mean, it's still pretty hot garbage. And of course, we're getting Holy Knight Doghetto as well, uh, who is who is pretty good. His passive is actually not bad. A pickup event is going to be held for the Reincarnation Revenge Fairy Helbrum and Forest Guardian King Fairy King, uh, which is King King and Helbrum on the same banner. Okay, we're going to have to go to that in a minute. Um, then we're going to be going to new bundles being added. Hawk Pass Special. Um, the Forest Guardian King Fairy Bundle. And is that Blue King or Green King? I actually don't know. We'll find out very soon. Uh, Melody Allegro Costume Set for, I believe, Helbrum. And then new costume sets for Fairy Knight Captain. I'm guessing this is Helbrum's costume set for 30 diamonds. And of course, you can, um, for Apical Appeal Heroes, Reincarnation Revenge have Fairy Helbrum, Forest Guardian Helbrum. Uh, yeah, it actually just says it's for Helbrum. Go for the next piece. New cosmetics for Del Ghetto and Death Pierce. Let's help. How do they look? Well, I mean, this Death Pierce set, that one's kind of fire. This one's pretty dope shit. That one's pretty dope shit. That one's really dope shit. Uh, so obviously, all the dope Death Pierce stuff is is pre pretty trash. They're gonna be av apparently available right away for 30 gems a piece. Uh, oh, actually, 50. Is that say 50? So basically, you had to buy it for 40 bucks, and you get 50 gems along with the costume set. Okay, never mind. It's the same as all the other shit. It's uh, never mind. It's the same as all the other shit. <laughs> And they want you to pay $40 for his cosmetic set and you get 50 gems along with it. And it's gonna be like that from 4.7 till 4.20 and then after 4.20 it's gonna be available forever. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> no, don't buy that shit. That's dumb as fuck, they trash. Moving on. The Hawk Pass is here. This is Pog. The Hawk Pass offers missions for you to complete and get reward order for them. Purchase the Hawk Pass and special, you'll get the SSR Hero Pleiades of the Azure Knight Death Pierce guaranteed. So they're giving you a free death pierce because they know he's trash. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Uh, loads of other awesome goodies as well as an SSR evolution pendants. Uh, clear all the missions in the Hawk Bass special so you will earn yourself uh, a guaranteed SSR ticket. Oh, this is a Seven Deadly Sins guaranteed, guaranteed SSR ticket. This is a different SSR ticket. I don't think this is going to be a part one SSR ticket. I think this might actually be a separate ticket that is global specific for just Sins. I don't know for sure because it just says the Seven Deadly Sins guaranteed ticket. So maybe it might be. We'll see. Next up, we have the Hawk Pass event period. The Hawk Pass event period is going to last from 4-7 all the way to 4-27. And the details of the Hawk Pass, you're going to clear the Hawk Pass to get points to level up your pass and get rewards. Purchase the Hawk Pass, you get actually a special bonus. So the way this works is very similar to a Battle Pass. You actually get a lot of rewards for free. And then on the other side of the Battle Pass, if you want to pay for the other rewards, you can get those rewards concurrently. And they both will, of course, overlap. And you can get the rewards very, very easily for both. Uh, the way that works on JP is that you can get basically up to one week of rewards every single chunk and that by the end of it you can finally get all the rewards and all the tickets and all that stuff included so if we're going to be looking at all the rewards here of course the special rewards right away is if you end up buying the hawk pass they actually are going to give you a death pierce right away uh so that means if you bought it it's usually i think it's about eight dollars that it costs for the hot pass so it shouldn't be very expensive um i'm hoping that it will be about eight dollars us uh obviously exchange rates and all that bullshit reply uh so the hawk pass over here you can see we're getting ap potions out of the hawk pass um four stamina four stamina enhanced potions some diamonds out of it uh some attribute key dungeons some more diamonds some gold some ss some ssr pendants so some decent stuff that you get for free on this side on the paid side however you're gonna get uh two ap potions an, an attribute key dundle fifty thousand gold another five diamonds uh so that's 10 diamonds you get for eight bucks already uh 20 diamonds no, 15 diamonds for eight bucks. 
So you get 15 diamonds for $8, uh, two stamina recovery potions, seven stamina recovery potions, 12 stamina recovery potions, and that's a total of 15. 15 stamina potions. Uh, gold, I'm not gonna count that. Uh, some attribute key dungeons, those are trash, so who cares? Uh, some red demon horns, those are cool, I guess, sure. Um, we're also getting one SSR pendant, two SSR pendants, a seven deadly sins guaranteed SSR ticket. Uh, we're getting a copy of Dogetto uh, and some red demon horns, it looks like, some, and some wings. So just decent stuff, but overall you're getting two SSR pendants, uh, 18 AP potions, uh, 15 or 18 AP potions, I can't, whatever I counted wrong. I think it was 15. Yeah, 15 AP potions, um, the an SSR guarantee ticket, and a copy of Death Pierce and Dogetto. So overall, it's uh, it's pretty worth eight bucks. That's that's, that's pretty worth. It. Yeah. So that's why people talk about the Hawk Pass and if you buy it or not. Uh, it's it's worth yeah eight bucks. We have the Get Awakening Stones. Uh, it's a new event that's gonna be uh, out called the Hawk Baby Book Event. Here's an opportunity for you guys to get Awakening Stones that you will definitely need to awaken your equipment. Hawk's Baby Book, Book Period Event is gonna be from 4.7 to 4.13. It's just another event or the battle event that you're gonna have to do. And you actually get clear rewards, so it, you get easy time. You get three Awakening Star, uh, three three Star Awakening Stones, uh, two four star awakening stones and a five star awakening stone just for clearing it and there's also other missions to, to clear to get gems as well uh you can participate a maximum of three times per day and i believe this is the one you do to get books during the event i want to say i'm not sure um i from my recollection i believe you do books for this and you fight dragons on the field i'm not sure but you know, i'm pretty pretty sure that's the one but you only get to fight it three times a day. So you can do all difficulties in the first day. And of course you do missions on every day following that. And the missions are actually uh, ones that you have to look at and do. I think like one of them is like kind of annoying to do. And just remember to do the missions as you're clearing them. Uh, pro tip. Next up we have loads of rewards. That's cool. I like loads of rewards. Okay, so this is going to be the new Elizabeth event. I it definitely is. This event was very, very, very annoying to complete on the original global, uh, Japanese version. It was a super taxing event. I'm hoping that they have alleviated some of the costs and time that it's going to take to this event because it does take a very large amount of stamina to complete all the missions. So the way it works is that there are going to be exchange materials and these exchange materials have wishing tree flower petals, tokens of oath, wishing paper and love letters. Each one of these can be then exchanged in an exchange shop and you're actually able to get rewards from the exchange shop that will give you lots and lots of stuff. As you can see here, uh, the exchange limit to you get one diamond for no limit, uh, sorry, you get uh, one diamond up to 20 diamonds if you exchange 20 love letters which is really good uh, then you're able to get a stamina potions uh enhancement stones out, out of those love letters as well for the wi now if you get 30 of each of these i think it is yeah three eight or 30 of each of the wishing tree flower petals the uh token uh, oaths or the wishing papers if you get um, a full set of each of these you're then able to get ssr pendants times 10 uh for 30 of these so you need 30 of them for each ssr pendant by the way for each ssr pendant so that means you need a total of 300 of these it's very expensive so as far as as far as ap potions go this is a very expensive event i'm hoping they up the drop rates <laughs> i'm very much hoping they've up the drop rates uh so the ones you should of course be farming are these ones right here the the ssr pendants and the sr pendants the ones we all need very much so so you get a total of 30 sr pendants and of course 10 ssr pendants very much worth doing this event but again very expensive for our stamina goes so just know hopefully this will be considered a free stage during the free stage event which is coming probably wait thursday and friday hopefully it's a free stage so we can do this on half stamina and we just do uh, lots and lots of this event uh, again this the ssr pendant can be exchanged at maximum one per day you get a maximum of 10 red demon horns and 10 gray demon wings per day so just make sure that you're getting an ssr pendant every single day because everything else you can buy whenever you want no matter what. Just make sure you buy at least one SSR pendant per day and farm the event as needed. Uh, the event stage period is going to be from 4-7 after maintenance until 4-21. Um, and it's going to be, the exchange shop is going to be all the way available until the 24th. So you do have a little bit of time after the event leaves in order to turn in all your rewards just in case you missed out. Uh, so that gives you the extra time to get those SSR pendants you want to like farm at the very end of the event. So next up we have the new hero arriving with of course Green King on the banner. Yeah, I did get it right. Cool. All right. 
This is going to have a new hero arriving. This is Red Helbrum. Uh, here's your chance of re reincarnated fairy Red Helbrum, who can deplete ultimate game move gauge and petrify for four scarred guardian king and is useful against gray demons. Oh no, it is red. <laughs> It is red. Okay, so I'm saying, okay, yeah. This one's really good against Great Demon. This one's really good against Red. Okay, uh, yeah, okay. I was like, what? <laughs> I just read that fast. Okay, so the banner that they're going to be on, it's going to be from 4.7 till 4.14. So obviously for the next week or so. And the hero rate up is going to be for Forest Cart, Fairy, Guardian, King. And the pickup bonus gauge is going to completely be separate from any other pickup gauge. So it's going to be on its own separate banner. So there is actually a guaranteed hero bundle coming to the game where you can actually just buy Green King. So if you're missing Green King and you really just wanted to pick him up or just get him real quick, you can actually just buy him plus 50 diamonds uh, from 4.7 to 4.14. This is probably going to be 40 bucks US, I think. About that-ish, I want to say. Um, so yeah, that, that's available. So if you want to buy him, you, you can buy him. And you can buy that from 4.7 to 4.14. We'll go over April week two events and we'll go over some other characters and stuff. April week two events, we get such rewards as diamonds and uh, hero intense questions. This is going to tell us, hey, we're getting half stamina. Here's the error that was uh, that was placed into the game right here. Um, the, the If you were wondering, Fold Sorgeress is always on the weekends for half stamina. If you were confused, they put an error on there and I, I, I called it out saying, well, I don't know why it's saying half stamina now, but Fold Sorgeress half stamina is typically on the weekend. So just know that that is what it was supposed to be in the first place. Yes, there is going to be half stamina books this weekend so that it does exist. And this, of course, will be half stamina on the other stages as well uh, for free stages on 4.9 through 4.10. That's the, the event stayed exactly the same. But of course, right here, you can see boss battles are going to be back to normal uh, next week. So there's not going to be any major differences there. Next, we're going to go over Dogetto. And Dogetto, if you wanted to know about him, is a trash panda character with a pretty good passive. Um... You can acquire him through any banner in the entire game, buy him for 20 silver coins, or you can just, you know, get him naturally because it's a fucking SR. Watch this auto animation in low quality. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so don't get uh, trash attack, trash defense, and mediocre HP. His first ability is going to have a debuff attack, which is going to prevent one enemy from using ultimate gauge for filling up. This is uh, a that lightning effect that you see on your characters over their ultimate gauge, and that means that so that your ultimate gauge cannot increase until this is cleansed off. So if you want to use a card merge in order to get that off, that does not work. So he does have a really good first skill. And his second ability actually gets rid of any debuff on the character, completely negating the need of actually having this Nitro Rush ability on the first character. It has Ruin, which is the same ability that Green King has on his second ability to remove debuffs and also deal extra damage per debuff on the enemy, giving you an extra 20% damage per debuff on the enemy. It's trash. Moving on, uh, then we got can his ultimate is cancels buff and stances on one enemy, inflicts this damage equal to 490% of his attack, then stuns the enemy for one turn. So you actually get this, I believe this is the same as Green Meliodas, I want to say. I'm not sure. I gotta check. But I'm pretty sure it's similar to that. You, you cleanse and stun. So, I mean, that, that sounds pretty similar. The reason Dogetto would be even useful at all is because of his passive ability. His passive ability increases the defensive skills of all strength attribute allies by 30%, which is 30% defense, 30% resistance, 30% uh, crit resistance, and 30% crit defense. This makes it a very good defensive unit for red characters. However, there is already a red Dreyfus in the game that gives you a 60% defensive skill, uh, defensive boost if you wanted to use this character with Dreyfus. And yes, they do stack. Um, I was just doing the training cave earlier with Delgado and Dreyfus. Obviously, they're both kind of trash banded characters. But if you do use them together, yes, they, their passives do stack. The linking characters for them are going to be Meliodas, Hendrickson, and Dreyfus. Uh, and his... Uh, affinity is going to be a weapon, uh, so he gives a weapon to himself. Moving on, we got Helbrum, and Helbrum if he, is a character everyone wants to hear about anyways. So Helbrum is going to be uh, cool, and let's go watch his ultimate animation, which is exactly the same as Green Helbrum. And his combined attack is with Gustav, and it's the same as Green Helbrum as well. You just see this a billion times.
I never watch that full animation. I only see the first part of it. Like I get up to like here, like on the animation, I think it's like right there. And then once they get to like that point, then the animation just ends for me. <laughs> that's how it is in PvP. Anyways, moving on. We have Red Hellbrum. Red Hellbrum has a ridiculously high amount of attack, a very low defensive stat, and a mediocre HP stat. His first ability is the same as Green Merlin as well as Red SR Bond, where it's able to deplete Ultimate Gauge by 1 as well as do 120% attack, but then at rank 2 goes up to 300% attack and does massive damage as well as still will deplete the Ultimate Gauge by 1, and at rank 3 does 450% attack but reduces Ultimate Gauge by 3. His second ability is the exact same thing as Blue King, where you're going to get inflict damage that's equal to 200% uh, on attack on one enemy, and on rank 2 is actually going to petrify that same enemy, and rank 3 will do 250% attack as well as petrified enemy for two turns his ultimate ability is going to cleanse uh, cancel stances and buffs on all enemies as well as do 280 percent attack to all enemies and has 420 percent at max and of course as you can see here has a link with gustav as you saw from the animation earlier moving his ultimate alt damage from 280 all the way up to 350 and then capping out at 525 in comparison to uh blue king he actually has a very very low damage ultimate uh, as far as the overall damage goes, I think King is like over 700 or something like that on an area effect attack, and uh, Helbrim is at about 525. So you can see it's much, much less. But the reason Helbrim is so strong is because of his passive. And the reason his passive is so strong is every ally that you have on your team that is still alive is going to give you an extra 5% base stats, giving himself. Um, a total of 20% base stats at the start of the fight, which is extremely, extremely strong in gearless PvP and gear PvP, because of course that will scale based off your base stats, including gear. If you're looking to figure out how strong Helbrum is on the current JP meta, he is still somewhat relevant, and there is a Kingbrum meta that has seen some uh, one of a resurgence because he did recently get UR gear, and he actually hits extremely hard uh, with his UR gear. But uh, there are a lot of other characters that have been released, like say the Red uh l uh lv or lost fade meliotis that just got released on the japanese version so he's not really seeing as much play because there are so many other characters to play uh, his linking partner of course is going to be gustav is going to give him regeneration rate king is going to give him pierce rate but you never run king as a friend on him because uh by using king on a friend as a friend you're not using king broom so i mean that would kind of like kill the comp uh, the Kingbrum comp, if you did not know, is going to have Gother as well as King as Helbrum, and the backline character is going to be Green Merlin. Looking at the rest of the team, you have uh, the other possible that you can use is, you, of course, you can use Blue, Green, or Red Bond for the normal version Bond, and he actually, at his max affinity level, of course, will get a weapon that has critical damage. Unfortunately, uh, Helbrum does not really scale very well off critical damage because his substats do not really have a very large amount of critical chance. He just has a lot of raw power. Next up, we're going to be going over Death Pierce. And Death Pierce is a trash panda SSR. Bottom tier for sure. But he's a good passive. So it's, it's you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't say good. I would say mediocre. Um, looking at Death Pierce, you can get him, of course. By, he's actually going to be in the... Uh, race draw human giant unknown and you can also get him for eight silver coins from the other human draw uh should you buy these absolutely not not worth or you can buy him of course through the normal banners he's most likely going to be on a part one ssr i believe i'm not 100 sure i gotta double check that out but uh we're gonna go over his ultimate ability and, t and show that thing off That is like the weakest animation I've seen from this game. <laughs> I mean, they just couldn't even be fucked at giving him a full, like, longer animation. It's literally like eight seconds and it's total ass. <laughs> All right, next up, we're going to go over his stats. Uh, his attack is pretty mediocre, his defense is pretty low, and his HP is also pretty mediocre. Uh, going into his first attack, he's going to do... 220% attack to one enemy, and at rank 2, it's going to change from an attack skill to a debuff skill, and it's going to do 220% attack to one enemy, and then disable buff and debuff skills for one turn. So if you use this on, say, a Gother, you'll be able to use his buff, skill, rank up skill, or his attack seal. However, King can easily cleanse that off, and that would be no problem. Uh, his rank 2 of that, or sorry, rank 3 of that ability would do 360% of his attack, and it's going to remove buff and uh, disable buff and debuff skills for two turns. His second ability is going to be 
um, a normal attack that is very similar to King's Ultimate. It does Shatter, which is going to ignore all resistance rate or patience rate uh, on the enemy and do 180% attack to one enemy, go to 270, and finally 450. The, the unfortunate thing is that this unit doesn't really have a large amount of attack to actually benefit from this ability and does not do tons and tons of damage because of it. His ultimate ability is going to inflict damage equal to 300% attack on all enemies and decrease attack related stacks by 30% for 3 turns. This is actually the exact same attack as the red SR Griamore if you are leveling him up, except it is on a green character. So if you wanted to have this uh, ability out and do this ultimate ability, the red SR Griamore does the exact same thing for the ultimate. The reason that he was even considered as a good character or a mediocre character is because of his passive. His passive ability decreases all enemies' critical resistance as well as critical defense by 30%. And honestly, I have no idea if it works from the backline or not. I've tried testing it. I actually have no idea because... Literally every time I use him, I never crit. Moving on, his linky partners are going to be uh, Meliodas as well as Meliodas, Hendrickson, and Dreyfus. Meliodas is giving him attack, so if you want to use Meliodas as his linky partner, there you go. This is one of the reasons right here my Meliodas, blue SR Meliodas is a very good unit to max out on his... Um, uh, his awakenings as well as his ultimate because he actually is used for a lot of different characters in the game as far as a linking partner he's a very good character just in general because he always gives 280 attack to all enemy all friends through as a an associate link uh Hendrickson will always give lifestyle and then of course Dreyfus will always give crit damage then is he's actually going to get a weapon of course on his uh, affinity giving him another 120 attack and six percent crit damage but it doesn't really matter because he never crits so that's, yeah that's all right, guys. Well, my name is Michael. That's going to be it for the news today. That's all we have there. But uh, if you are wondering, would should you pull or not on the most recent upcoming banner? My opinion is, if you are free to play, absolutely not. If you are a budget player, probably not. If you are a big Hoyland, of course, you know you gotta, you gotta bop those news without a kingdom. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get out there and just flex on some kids. <laughs> you, you gotta get out there and just you know just bop them real good real good you know i i see you i see you you know the top 100 players that they'd be using the king room be like oh king room be toxic oh shit. thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did enjoy the video of course like and subscribe all the fun stuff and as you can see from the giant spam wall that chat is finally on it today oh my god i'm so happy for you guys Thank you for watching the video. Thank you hit the notifications. You want to be notified every time I drop a video. And again, thank you for watching. Have a great day, guys. Peace.